Hi, welcome to this quick tutorial video. Um, it's been a while since I made a Flexform video, so um, or previously WS Form. So I thought I'd do a, a quick one um, using the show and select features that Flexform has. And we'll uh, build a kind of an interactive uh, inquiry form that you can put on your uh, MediaWiki website or your wiki uh, pages. So um, I'm here on the site that hosts the documentation for Flexform. And in there, you can find the show and select information. Now, there's a lot of options and really neat things that you can do with that. But there's one sp a particular one I want to use, which is going to be this one. Um, basically, it will uh, sh it gives you the op opportunity to show some extra input fields as soon as somebody types a certain word or certain words. Um, and that's what we're going to do. So, and that's the interactive part that I was uh, mentioning. The first thing we see here is that we need to have a show on select equals show on select for this to work. Because then Flexform knows, okay, we're doing some show on select here. And it loads the necessary uh, code for that. So let's head off to a test page. I just created a page out of, out of the blue called Webform. And I put some text in it. I'll show you the source. So that's about it. Um, well, thinking about the form, we would um, try to make it as easy as possible for a customer to fill it in or a, a user or whomever that has the question and wants to fill in the form. So we would need a name, we would need a, uh, an email address and uh, a text area where they can type in their question, I would say. So um, let's, um, bum, bum, bum. I, of course, I prepared something so that you don't have to see me typing the whole time. Um, so let's first start off with a form. We want to create a form and we need to end this form and everything in between there will be our form that we're going to create. Um, now what I want to do with the form is assume that somebody submits the form. I wanted to create a page in the wiki, but I also want to uh, send an email out. So I get an email and the customer gets a copy of the email that I got. So that's kind of neat. And I want to show the, the customer or the user, uh, the visitor for the website, I want to show them a thank you message. So let's first start off with telling Flexform that this is going to be based on email. We need that um, show on select. Let's copy that because it's equals show and select, so then Flexform knows, okay, we're doing a show and select thingy. And message on success is going to be, uh, we have, um, what's, what should we say, received your inquiry. Thank you, something like that. Okay, that's, that's it. So that's some basic stuff. What's the message going to be as soon as somebody has successfully submitted? And we tell Flexform that we want to do things with email and we want to use show and select. So those are the things. And now we're just basically going to build um, the form, the elements that we need for the form. So we start off, and I'm now going to be copying and pasting. So we start off with a label um, where we ask for the name of the person. And then we would like to have an input field of type text. Um, saying that it's required um, where we actually, a user can actually type in that name. Now let's do the same for the email address. So label for, e e the, the four is its standard HTML. It refers to the ID of this field. Um, so email address inputs type is email. It's handy because then if you, they type something else than an email, they get a message that it's not a correct email address. So that's kind of handy. So now we have a name, uh, an email. And um, and then we, of course, we need a text area where we can actually, um, where they can actually type that question. So let's uh, give it a label. And then we add an input type is text area. Uh, name is question. 
and do we want this to be required i think we, it should be required but otherwise what's the use and then we end up we end with a uh, a submit button so let's do a preview here see if i don't didn't make any uh, mistakes surely enough your name uh, your email address your inquiry and a text area where they can type something so those are the 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 main fields that we need um of course when you submit this basically nothing will happen because with the email function you still need to tell flexform okay what do you what do you want to email what's you know what's the whole idea um and as i said i also wanted to create a page so we also need to tell flexform that it needs to create a page but the first thing i want to do is use that show and select so um let's dive into that first so the show and select basically uh, it's it's pretty easy. We want to do something with this field here, which is the text area, right? So on that text area, I'm going to say uh, show on select. And I'm just going to con call that uh, content. Um, did I put an ID in here? I have a name of question, but I don't have an ID. Let's put the ID there as well. Just noticed that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say show and select this is content. Now I'm going to create a, a diff. Um, and basically, let me, let me show you. Show on select trigger. Trigger equals. Um, and I'm going to say here content. So this will be triggered from this, from the text area. This is a bit different here. Basically, when you only use this, and this will be your select field, then as soon as this will be selected, it will trigger this and show this. But now I want to do this differently because this is a text area. And there's another option there, show on select type. And there we say, okay, when should this be triggered? And I'm gonna say if the uh, text area contains the word installation. That's basically what I'm telling it now. So if the text area, if somebody is typing in the text area right here and the word installation is contained within the whole text, then it's going to show all the stuff in this diff here. There's nothing in there now, but we're going to put something in there. And what we're going to put in there is called the, uh, I'll just call it, I prepared that, I'll call it the installation options. So let's put, oh, let's give it a little bit more indent there. So this is the diff. So if somebody types the word installation within the text area, this will be shown. Um, and what I'll do here is, okay, somebody's typing, apparently it has to do with installation. So I'm going to, try to figure out what kind of installation they're having, what kind of uh, issues they're having and what kind of environment. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to show them a select box where they can choose if they have installed problems with Azure, AWS, a hosted server, um, perhaps a local installation, or it's completely unrelevant. So I'm not going to use that. Now, the funny thing is here, as you can see, here's another show and select same as I did here. So I'm defining a new show and select here, which I'm calling call local, meaning that as soon as local is selected, I can show something else again. So let's create a new div. I'm just going to do that behind this one. The trigger is local. And what I'm going to say is if, if somebody chooses local as installation option, I want to know what operating system they're using. Is that Windows, Mac, or Unix? So basically what I did here is created a new div, same thing as there, uh, but another show on select on as soon as this is selected. And then this is shown. So let's see, uh, let's see if that works. So name, uh, and I can start typing something. And as soon as I would be typing the word installation, there you go, 
if you have any questions, blah, 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 and they can choose AWS, a hosted server, they can choose local. And as soon as they choose local, can you tell us what operating system you're using? Uh, Max or Linux or whatever. And then they can send that off. If in, the word installation is not in there, the only thing that will be sent to FlexForm will be the name, email address, and this field here, the text area. But as soon as installation is there, it will also take this question, the, the value of this question and the value of this question. If this was chosen here, the, the value of what operating system will not be sent. So then you would only get a name, an email address, the question asked, and then a possible answer they gave here that will be sent off. So that's um, that's basically all the fields we need, and we have the show on select in there as well. And you could do other stuff. You don't have to put a select field here. You could also just show a little bit of text explaining something if it has to do with the if the word installation is in there or something else. Or I need mention that there's another uh, form they can submit if they have installation uh, questions. Those kind of things. It's it's uh, this is just an example of what you can do. Now, the only thing I'm not really happy with is the way this looks. Um, it's all next to each other. We can do some breaks or we can do an, enter a new line, but I want this to be looking like a kind of a, a neat, neat form. So um, let me see. Do we have um, this? This theme is called Chameleon. Um, and Chameleon is based on Bootstrap. So let's have a look at uh, what um, Bootstrap can do with regards to forms. See, this would this would be looking a little bit better than that what what we're having right here. So how do they do that? So apparently, there's the form. They put a diff with a class of form group around it. Uh, the input elements get a form control that and well, that's basically about it. So let's start off with this. Let's add that to our form around. So this and then it ends here. Let's kind of line this out as well. So we do these diff kind of groups thingies. Um, we do that here as well. And then we end the diff. Let's put some spaces in there. Let's see how that looks. Does that make any difference already? Okay, so the group just basically groups in, on a row. What was the other thing again? They have a class of form control on the input fields. So where's our input? That's here. That's uh, one space too many. Let's put a space behind there and let's do the same thing here. Let's see how that looks. Okay, well, that, that's looking a lot better already. So what else do they have? Oh, I kind of like this. So let's, let's just add that as well. It's below the email. So just going to add that. Show preview. Ah, sweet. It's looking good. All right, so let me have a look. So let me all add all those styles to that by copying it from here. Let's have a look, show preview. Okay, so that's looking pretty neat. So we got some styles for the, the name, email address, you inquire, you inquiry. So, Let's make that your. Okay, let's um, show the preview. All right, and let's see how that looks. If we would use the word installation, oh, that's looking a lot better. See? So this is like an intuitive form, wouldn't you agree? Now, the only thing we need to do is tell FlexForm what, what we want to do with this form. Because now people can submit it, but FlexForm still doesn't know what, what should I be doing with this. So first we're going to tell 
we want to use email. And you can always have a look here. And basically, the, the only thing it needs, as with the example here, is like it needs a template. And a template doesn't mean template like a MediaWiki template. It, it's just called an email template, and it's just a page. It's just a page on the, on the site. So let's do that, and we'll call that, uh, so we say template, uh, oops, template equals an inquiry email template. So we need to create that page. So that's what we did want to do. So we want to send out a mail and we have to define the content of the mail. And the other thing I want to do is I want it to have I want it to create a new page. So I'm going to say create. And of course, as mentioned earlier, if you go to create here, It'll show you exactly what it all means. And basically, the only thing we, we're going to use is we're going to be using um, the MW right, the MW, MW template, and I want to use at random. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to type it here. So what's the what's the name of the page going to be? It's going to be inquiry, inquiry. And then I put I put a nine minus sign behind it because what I'm gonna do now is say with the options for creating a page, I'm gonna say add random. Meaning it's gonna create a page that starts with inquiry and then a dash um, and then a random number. And the template that should be on the page is going to be, I don't have that template, so I should basically make it but it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter so that's what i'm telling flexform create a page called inquiry add a random number behind it and use it and grab all the form fields that you have and put it inside a template called inquiry that's basically what i'm saying here so now the only thing we need to do before we can test this is get that to create that inquiry mill template thingy so um Let's uh, let's save this page and let's go to uh, a copy of that page and let's go here and show you what I've done. Edit the source. This again um, with email, there's a whole complete explanation on how that works. Basically, you see it here as well. This is a template. And what I'm saying here is to whom is going to is, is that email going to be sent? And it's going to be the form field with the name email. And we have that one as well. So the value of whatever's in here is going to be getting a mail. I'm also going to BCC myself. Let me go just go to this one. Um, I'm also going to send a blind count copy. So another copy to myself. This is going to be the subject, an inquiry from and then a dollar sign with name means that it comes from the form field that is called name, which is this one. So that's the name that they're filling in. Um, from who is, is this email going to be? It's going to be from our company's website, uh, uh, basic email. Um, I want to use a header and I want to use a footer. And with defining the email here where you say template is this, it's basically the same with this. So we need a page called mail header and a page mail footer where we put our header and footer in. Now this is going to be the content of the page and the mail header will be on top of that and the mail footer will be on the bottom of it. So here I'm just gonna say dear and then again the name as we used here in the subject. Thank you for inquiry, blah, 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 blah. These are the, this is the information that we got. And I'm only gonna use the fields where I'm certain of that they're required and I will be receiving because I, if I would put in here the like the local uh, operating system, it, it might not have been submitted because they didn't choose it. So I'm only keep going to keep it with this in, in, in this case. And then we'll contact you shortly, blah, blah, blah. So that's that's the mail template. Um, and then, of course, as I said, we need a mail header. So let me have a look at what I've done with the mail header. I created a simple widget and the widget just shows this image.
See, the only thing it does is show the image because of course, uh, the email client needs to be able to understand what we're doing and this it understands, but the way that MediaWiki does it with a link in it and things that might cause problems. So I'm just gonna do it this way. Um, so that's the header and let's have a look what the footer does. Okay, so a horizontal line and it ends the, it enters the company name. So that's that's it. So let's save this out. So, okay, uh, my name is Charlie. And this is my email address. My inquiry is, this is a test. So send that off. So we got the message, you have received your, we have received your inquiry, thank you. Um, and then let's have a look at my email. There it is. And this is the mail I got from to uh, Charlie, dear Charlie, thank you for submitting your blah, 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 and that's the information and the footer and the header. So it looks pretty neat. I mean, and it, it's not a lot of work if you ask me. And of course, then we're gonna have a look at admin links, special pages. Let's have a look at the recent changes. Um, we do have an inquiry, but I have a minus behind it at its source. And sure enough, all the information is in there. I did notice that um, there's our form. It's this one, isn't it? Yep. So, ah, MV options. That's not a thing. So it's MV option at random. So that's why there was no number behind the, uh, but of course we're going to do another one. So Charlie, this one, and then we're gonna, I have some problems with my installation of media. Oh, and I get some extra options. Well, I'm on a local server and I'm using windows. Send. Again, we get the nice thank you message. I can hear I already have the inquiry again. And that's basically still the same as the other one. As I said, it will not be sent together with the mail, the two extra questions that were asked, uh, answered. But if I would go now into the special pages, recent changes, as you can see now, we do have an inquiry. And if I have a look at the source, you'll notice that it has added all those options. And the good thing, of course, is you could do a, uh, a semantic ask, for instance, um, saying, okay, I want all inquiries that have to do, that has local options of Windows, or just give me all of them. And we could have added uh, a field with the date and time. Uh, of course, you could see that on the page here the date and time, but you could have also added to the um, to the form itself. So yeah, that's basically it. It's been longer than I expected, but of course there was a lot of tell and we did dive in depth a little bit. Um, just have a look at all the options that you're having, especially with the show and select. There's a lot of things you can do. There's also possibilities of, you know, if you have like a long form and two of these selected options are selected, then you can do something or one of them is selected. It's called the or or the and. There are a lot of things you can do. Um, so have a look at, at them. You can find them at www.opens-csp.org. You can follow all the documentation there. Um, and we're gonna put some more examples on there. But basically every page has an example where you can have a look at uh, how it works. You can actually see it in here as well. So testing value, it says here, if, if it's testing value. So all the examples here, they work as well, which making it pretty neat and easy to understand. All right, that's it. Ah. Thanks for your time. Wiki, wiki, base, base. Wiki, base, base. Wiki, wiki, base, base. Wiki, base, solutions.